comrades. Today, our guest is a journalist from the leftist portal Strike EU, Małgorzata Kulbaczewska Figat. Good main... morning. Good morning. The main topic of our meeting are, of course, the ongoing protests in Poland led by the women's strike. A few days ago, you gave an interview about the protests in Poland for the Barricade Channel. So I would like to talk to you about some other topics. The Barricade's goal is to create a leftist network in Eastern Europe. So the first question I would like to ask you is why do you think some of the biggest uprising against government in the last 30 years have broken out almost at the same time in the three Eastern European countries, such as Poland, Belarus, and Bulgaria. While each one of these protests is different, we can see in all of them a radical rebellion of the younger generation against politicians who have been present on the political stand for several decades. It's just a coincidence or it is an awakening in our part of Europe. And if it is, do you think we can expect more of this protest to burst out in other Eastern European countries? Okay, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to discuss this very interesting topic. And uh, are we witnessing in Eastern Europe? Perhaps awakening is still too big for a word, but indeed a very important thing is taking place as the young generation is saying, get the fuck out to the elder elites. They are, they don't want the older politicians to lead and they demand a new society. They demand that society is organized on according to some new rules to that leave the younger generation more space to decide on their own lives uh, and to, well, to get more freedom. And uh, well, let us, uh, you mentioned three countries, Bulgaria, Belarus and Poland. I think that the Belarus case is after all quite specific because Belarus has its own unique structure of, proper, of property, uh, of the power of politics, but indeed a comparison between Bulgaria and Poland could lead us to very interesting conclusions. In both Bulgaria and both Bulgaria and Poland underwent a radical neoliberal transformation at the beginning of the 90s. In both countries the old social structure was destroyed and uh, the population was promised a great bright new future under free market. And after uh, three, after 30 years, what we have are the societies with large inequalities, with a great deal of young generations left with no good perspectives for the future, uh, and uh, another deal of citizens looking for this bright future, not in the country, but abroad, um, working, uh, working in Western European countries, where of course no bright future awaits for them. And uh, what is... Um, what we see in this protest is that people are uh, people demand from the from the ruling class to get out both in Poland and in uh, Bulgaria uh, and thus they are they are expressing their discontent with all the general frame in which the po political life was being led in last 30 years However, as in both countries, the leftist alternative, the left wing, the social alternative to the to neoliberalism was ridiculed, was pushed aside and was betrayed by so-called social democrats themselves. People are expressing their anger in terms of uh, seeking for more personal liberty uh, in mm, in terms of uh, well, seeking to decide on their own lives, there is there are no calls for equality, both during Bulgarian and Polish protests. There are screams for more liberty, like uh, people on one hand wanted to get out of the system in which they were put in last 30 years, and on the other hand, they still express their anger in these terms that were like put into their heads by the system, which emphasizes liberty. And um, what we can also see is that in both countries, both Bulgaria and Poland, the ruling elites have no interesting proposals for the younger generations that would uh, stop their anger in larger perspective. So in, in both Bulgaria and Poland, the government can be confident about the nearer future because 
it has the police, it has the army, it has all the it has all the state apparatus on its side, but there is no attractive ideological alternative for the protesters. So the governments are waiting till the wave of protests is uh, well calms down, till people go home, people become disillusioned again. But this is just a way of calming down the reactions for a while. So in some time there will be no new protest and mm, the and uh, so and so the government will will be just floating from one occasion to another. And um, mm, you ask uh, you um, uh, another question is that this uh, what these radical rebellions would produce uh, as uh, will these radical rebellions would be able to produce their political alternatives because in both Poland and Bulgaria so far we heard from the protesters they that they don't want this order this uh, uh, this political life that they knew so far but we didn't they wanted as a replacement. So in Bulgaria, the clearest alternative presented by part of the protesters was some abstract liberal rule of law. They, the protesters claimed that if, the, if there is a genuine fight against corruption, so if the dishonest judges and prosecutors are removed from the judiciary, if there are new elections in the parliament, then perhaps there will be the country will go in a better direction in poland we hear also about restoring the rule of law and uh, letting the women decide about their own bodies but none of this is a consistent vision of a new social order and none of this would actually solve most of the problems of these people who are in the streets well, and uh, what is also significant, I think, is that the most oppressed by capitalism, those who were suffered most from neoliberal transformation in both Poland and Bulgaria are not in the streets. Uh, because it is very important to say that in the course of neoliberal transformations, the working people of both countries were stripped not only of a security of employment, of the rights that they had under the real socialist state, but uh, they were also stripped of dignity. In both countries, people heard that if you don't want to set up their own and your own enterprise, if you don't want to be active in, if you don't want to be flexible in the with the job market, then you are well just uh, that you are useless for the society to be short. You are not a valuable person who can contribute something for the common good. And so people who are the most oppressed, people who are in the worst both economical and social situations are not really protesting now to the were not protesting in Bulgaria because they were stripped of any illusions of any hopes that their voice could be heard that uh, they they you know to go out in the street and to show your slogans you need to have some self confidence you need to believe that what you say is important and you might be heard and the neoliberal transformations were so traumatic for some for some strata of the po po polish and bulgarian societies that those who were hard the most do don't have any more hopes to for uh, that anybody hears their voice and uh, some uh, activists from Polish uh, from Polish uh, trade union Inicjatywa Pracownicza, so the Working People Initiative, uh, told me that in Poland mm, now it is it is much easier to go to the street as a woman who protests against a drastic abortion law, to go out as a woman who wants her woman personal rights uh, to be uh, to be conserved, then to go out as a working woman who wants higher wages, safe working conditions and to be respected at the at the working place. Because saying uh, saying out that I am a worker and I am not satisfied with uh, with my life is still something that is rather to be ridiculed and not heard in Eastern Europe. But go Going out and saying I am a woman and I want my rights respected, that is an attractive identity, that is something that you must proudly go out the street. <clears throat> okay, you said a lot of things, very interesting. Uh, I want to uh, ask you a question about dignity, which you said that is very difficult for workers today and uh, demonstrate in Poland. 
Uh, and do you think that uh, uh, this media propaganda, which we saw uh, about um, election in, in Belarus, and all this media covered uh, information, which was in Polish media, in all Polish media, um, I think that most uh, time in the sept uh, August and September, all the time they they uh, give uh, information about the protest, and all the time they said that if you have if you protest in Belarus, you are uh, somebody who was courageous, you are good, you are uh, brave, and uh, I think, but I don't know if it is it is true or not that this. Uh, uh, Propaganda made by the Polish uh, Polish television uh, may uh, give a little courage for the Polish uh, Polish women Polish people because uh, we, we talk about the the women's strike but there are not only women who who, who, who demonstrate it is it, it was a woman in Beijing but after a, a few years a few, few days. There are other groups who starting protests also. What do you think about this? I think you are right uh, when you say that the protester, protests in Belarus and their media coverage really uh, encouraged people to go to the streets. Because yes, from August, from the whole September and a good deal of October, we had in Polish media really quite a detailed information on Belarus on every single demonstration really people who were there were praised for their courage for going to the streets for sh for shouting their slogans and uh, really i think that uh, a lot of people in poland could have thought well so demonstrating is not old styled demonstrations are not out of date and you have to remember that uh, in poland really the potential of uh, anger against the government has been growing seen uh, for quite a time and uh, you, uh, we have to remember that in July, Polish Prime Minister has uh, announced that the epidemics in Poland is over, that we won over uh, COVID and that uh, we can s slowly come back to normal lives. And uh, what the people saw in autumn was that there was not, on, not only there was no normal lives, but there were more and more infected people and even even worse there came very alarming accounts from hospitals and from public medicine system that turned out to be completely unprepared for uh, for an epidemic which is well which was quite a logical outcome of events when you uh, treat uh, pub public uh, public health system as something unnecessary and you only wait to privatize it, which was the approach of uh, many Polish governments in the past. But so there was a huge potential of anger in the autumn in Poland. And when people saw for a few quiet were watching Belarus for a few weeks on and on. So yes, I think that quite a lot of people from young generations could have thought that yes, going out to the street is a great idea. And um, it is uh, you you said that in the beginning the protest was almost in, uh, exclusively well led by women and attended by women and in the uh, next days it became wider and here I, I also agree with this observation because I I was I attended personally the very first demonstrations that took place on the 20 22nd October just after the verdict of the so-called uh, Constitutional Tribunal and I was in this crowd that went spontaneously from the tribunal uh, to first to the headquarters of our ruling party law and justice and then to the house of Jarosław Kaczyński and main there were mainly women and I would even say there were mainly young women and younger than me. I am now 30 and the, girl, the women who were in the crowd were about, well, from 18 to 20 and 20 and so really young people who attended their first demonstration. And it was a very particular experience. Like on one hand, these people were participating in any political event in their first political event because most of them were quite uninterested by politics so far and uh, definitely in politics in real life because facebook and e and uh, online activities don't count and uh, on the other hand 
it was like a it was like liberation for them not only not only an act of protest against this particular decision about this particular attack from the uh, from uh, from the catholic church but an act of liberation of people who for the last few months were suppressing their social activities, who could not live their normal lives because of the pandemics. And so suddenly they found a way of expressions to show that they are discontented with everything that happened in Poland. And so then, then indeed in the next days it became more organized, their, their uh, there came more people of all the age groups. Uh, the protest began to take place in the whole country, which is absolutely phenomenal because, you know, there are country, there are places in Poland that protested for the very first time in their history on for, or for the second time because, you know, there were such events like the revolution of 1905 in the Polish territory that really also that when there were also demonstrations everywhere over the country. So like we are so, but Indeed, this is a historical moment, and uh, and even if even if nothing is won, even if nothing is won in political sense, then I think that important changes were already going on in people's minds. Okay, um, Poland and Poles have the opinion of the um, of a Catholic backwards. This is my opinion as well. I remember national mourning, the death of Karol Wojtyła and all the hysteria under the banner of the JP2 generation. Uh, as an immigrant who has not lived in Poland for over seven years, what surprised me the most was the protest in front of the churches and even disrupting the mass. Do you think Poland is changing? Do you think there is a chance that Poles will begin to massively leave church and Catholic religion? Well, honestly, uh, it was all the protests outside and inside the churches were also the thing that surprised me very much. Not that I think that they were not necessary. I am very happy that they happened because the Polish Catholic Church was intervening in Polish public life in an absolutely scandalous manner over last years. But I really didn't didn't expect the protesters to be that that strong will to be so courageous to go to the churches with their protest. And indeed, these protests uh, actually took place just on one, two days. And then uh, they then the demonstrations took part in the street again. Uh, but coming back to your question, I think there is a chance that finally we have a secular state in Poland and that uh, po politicians are not paralyzed by the by Catholic fundamentalists and the belief that, oh no, the church is such an omnipotent structure, so we ha just have to go in line with what the bishops say. In fact, I, I said uh, at, the, at the end of my previous answer that even if these protests don't win anything in the immediate perspective, they will relieve an effect in people's minds. And this profound effect will be the uh, conscience that not everybody in Poland is Catholic, not everybody is conservative, not everybody adheres to so-called traditional social roles. People who don't who are not who don't want to listen to the church in their everyday lives have just the opportunity to see how many of them are there, how many women are not going to give birth to uh, well to um, to mortally ill uh, fetuses just because the bishop said so. So many people saw that Catholic fundamentalism is actually stronger in words that in real that in, in real um, that in real support all over the country, and that even in small cities, small towns, even in the villages, you don't have to be a radical Catholic. There are more people like you, and this this is very important. And uh, you also mentioned the national hysteria after the death of the Pope, the Paul or Karol Wojtyła. And uh, at that time, the so political experts talked about the generation GP2. Now they, they say that this generation was replaced by the generation, get the fuck off, get the fuck out. And, uh, that, uh, and this is also an example how uh, national conservative Catholic propaganda turned out to be ineffective in the young generation because 
historical policy and so and uh, religious propaganda may be efficient if the government at the same time really offers people something well something material something that really makes their lives better if you offer only propaganda that you can't keep the people's support forever and so the young generation that was bombarded by religious content, which attended religious religious classes at school, and which heard from everywhere that every Pole must be a patriot, must be a Catholic, must be a religious person. This young generation massively went away from the church and uh, expressed their discontent louder than any other generation before. So, uh, do I think if the Poles would go uh, away from the church in a short perspective, I think that the young generation is already going, getting away from the church. There were uh, last uh, in the last few days, uh, there were uh, the, um, I heard uh, I read service in Polish uh, service in Polish press, the public polls about uh, young people uh, attending religion less religion classes at school. You know that do you know that if some of the bigger cities in Poland like Wrocław or uh, or Krak uh, not not Krakow uh, Poznań Poznań yes the percentage of young people attending religion classes uh, young people meaning those who are in secondary school already is now lower than 50% people are massively leaving um, um, leaving these classes people don't want to listen to catholic propaganda so the young generation is getting secularized already well, the bigger, the other question is that the politicians uh, are who are now in the parliament. I think they have not yet understood what is happening. The the guys from Civic Platform, the so the so-called main opposition force against law and justice, in the last few days commented on what was happening and said, "Oh, we need to revive the so-called abortion compromise, which is no compromise at all." And which is uh, and which was clearly rejected by them by people in the streets, uh, and people in the streets, by the way, have seventy percent of support. It is another public poll, uh, another poll uh, where the people were asked, "Do you support the protests or not?" So. In the situations where polls are massively rejecting Catholic fundamentalism, the so-called liberal opposition is still trying to find some middle way between the protesters and between the church. So you see, we have a quickly secularizing society and the politicians who don't get what is happening. Mm, I would like to add that the people who made this uh, Catholic propaganda uh, now we see that they are hypocrite in the highest level. Um, the people like uh, Henryk Jankowski or Stanisław Dziwisz or others who are many scandals, pedophile scandals. And the and the last in the last days, I don't know which if you heard it was it is the history of the uh, deputy of the Hungary uh, in Euro Parliament who was uh, responsible for the Catholic constitution in Hungary, uh, which uh, he, he uh, write an uh, uh, article that uh, you have to condemn the LGBT uh, people, uh, stuff like this. And after he, he was retrieved in the, in the orgy uh, homosexual in Brussels. Yes, and there are uh, and yes, I heard about that story and uh, now there are speculations in Poland where there are Polish politicians too, either in the same orgy or at another in the same place because yes because you uh, the orgies were held regularly and now there is much speculations in Poland where there are also our conservative poll uh, our conservative politicians there or uh, perhaps uh, they are attending similar events in other place yes this is um, uh, yes what uh, what you said about Stanisław Dziwisz and Henryk Jankowski and also Henryk Gulbinowicz and even the even Karol Wojtyła himself, because his name is always mentioned somewhere next to those, uh, all the sexual scandals really made many people think what the Catholic Church really is, and perhaps 
all the fuss they are talking about the sexual ethics and ethics of family life is really a, is really bullshit because they are not they are not doing that in their own lives they are harming children while telling everybody else how to be moral how to live a good life so yes so indeed these all scandals also had um, also uh, also had an influence on what happened in Poland um, I, I would now like to ask you about the police repression of protesting women. If I am not mistaken, during the first days of the protest, the police were peaceful against the protesters and even defend women against attacks by nationalists. By then, police strategy seems to have changed and many women have been beaten with clubs and even attacked with gas. Uh, this even applies to parliamentarians with immunity. Is the country where the police are beating female MPs already a police state? Oh, before I answer to this question, which is an interesting question, I'd like to say, uh, I'd like to go back to the chronology of events a little bit, because yes, you are right. The first protests were definitely not, re not repressed. Uh, the police didn't attempt to disperse women. And even the day, even on the day of the highest mobilization, that was the, be the end of October, beginning of November, when there were 100,000 people in the street in both Warsaw and Wrocław and uh, thousands more in other cities of Poland, cities, towns and everything what you want. Um, the police did not tell people to disperse, although they Theor theoretically they could have done so because we are in the state of pandemics and uh, so the big gatherings are not legal. Um, which is by the by the way i don't want to go into legal details but uh, it is now there is now a debate between uh, between lawyers in poland is it legal to protest or not in the state of pandemics or uh, in other words is the government uh, able to uh, to forbid public meetings and gatherings uh, or is it that that polish constitutions conserves the life for the the right for free expression and so gatherings can happen under any conditions but those are details so let us go back to the polish repressions yes it is said that according to unofficial information, the government and particularly Jarosław Kaczyński, our strongman and now vice prime minister, wanted to suppress the protests from the very beginning. He wanted the police to be aggressive even when there were 100,000 people in the streets, even when there were 50,000 people in the streets. And according to those unofficial informations that were published on the media, those were the Minister of Interior who, who who persuaded Kaczynski that if you send the police, policemen against such a huge crowd, there will be riots, there will be violence, destructions, and you can't really predict what happens next. Perhaps people get even more angry, and so we will then have a true rebellion, not only peaceful demonstrations. And that was why during the first two weeks, indeed, the policemen were rather just watching the events, and indeed they in a, in a few cases, they defended the national. They defended the police from an attack of uh, aggressive nationalists, and on the in uh, and it worked in the other uh, in the other way round too, because there were two cases when uh, nationalists gathered around the church, and uh, the crowd wanted them to go back, wanted them to go away so that they can protest outside of this church freely. And it was the police who actually defended nationalists from being pushed away or even something worse. Uh, but now, yes, you are right, this police strategy is now to make people scared. And uh, the demonstrations of 18th November, uh, that was uh, was one of the one was one such case and then we had even uh, we had more violence during the next huge demonstrations which took place a week ago uh, on Saturday 28 uh, November so what happened there uh, in the first case a group of policemen with no uniforms with no signs uh, make that would make people understand that those are policemen started to beat women with clubs yes and then 
we found then it was uh, then we found out that uh, it was an anti-terrorist police unit. So, so the one that is really prepared for a fight with uh, the most desperate, the most aggressive. Uh, I don't know, terrorists, criminals, whoever. Definitely not young women who had no arms and no intentions to be violent. And um, do, are we already in a police state? Indeed, our state shown that it is not going to negotiate, it is not going to seek a compromise, and that it is not going even to listen to the citizens. And here I will tell you about the demonstrations that took place a week ago. On the on 28th of November, the protest, the mar the protesters' march was allowed to uh, to go freely, just a few hundred meters. Then the police began to block the road. Uh, people tried to continue marching by going some on some some smaller streets, not the main street, but looking for some other way. Then they were again rounded up and uh, the police began chasing them. The police gazed a few people and uh, yes, and again there was a case when a parliamentarian with immunity was uh, tear gassed. So is it a police state? I think that a full-fledged police state would go even further by well by arresting the leaders of the uh, of the strike, by uh, making their organization illegal. But I can't really tell you that I am sure that this would not happen because the leaders of Ogólnopolski Strike Kobiet, so the all all Poland strike so the main umbrella organizations which is inspiring the protest and providing some organizational support they are they will uh, they will answer in the prosecution and perhaps in court from the paragraph on um, well uh, provoking an epidemiological danger they are supposed to uh, they are going to have they are going to be judged for making people gather in one place and so exposing them to infection and uh, there were other cases when the local organizers of the protests not the figures that are well known in the whole country but the local leaders were also summoned by the police they were informed that the, they were organizers of the illegal gathering and that they may answer in court for that so even if we are not in a police state already then we are we are dangerously approaching that state and this is really this is really not a positive information the judgment of the constitutional constitutional tribunal of uh, 22 october is in effect an obligation or even an order to give birth to disabled children can you explain how catholic poland exactly cares for disabled citizens today Oh, I, the answer is very short. It doesn't care at all because we had a protest a week and we could see it very clearly like two years ago when there was a protest of uh, disabled children's parents straight in the parliament. Uh, the, they, the, disabled, the, the disabled adults and the disabled children's parents demanded from the country more, uh, more social care. And uh, they uh, wanted to. Uh, they wanted, uh, on one hand, more financial support from families with such children, uh, and for uh, disabled adults. And on the other hand, another legal solutions that would uh, that would secure access to rehabilitation for these people, to medical care, uh, to. Um, that would also allow the, the parents who care for those children to uh, have some time for rest, to be able to well leave the child at least for a week in a specialized institution so that they can rest a little bit. They also protested this, uh, reg this regulation, which is still in force now uh, today in Poland, that if a mother, if a parent, presumably a mother, wants to receive this very minimal financial support from the state for the disabled child, she has to immediately stop working so that this so that this money that the state provides are the only the only support for the family because the presumption is that you have you either take care of the child or do something else 
well and also the um, uh, and um, I also mentioned that the neo that neoliberalism destroyed uh, Polish public healthcare system, and obviously this uh, this has the worst implications for those who are most sick, more uh, the who are disabled, uh, who really need regular help. Well, they if they don't have money, if they are not able to get uh, some more. So for, for instance, rehabilitations, if they are not able to pay for rehabilitation themselves, then the state has nothing to offer for the disabled child. The, the parents who have no money will just well struggle to survive. The families with disabled children belong to the poorest strata of the society and nothing really changes in this resort. And uh, so, and what did our, what did the current government did for uh, the mothers who agree to uh, to give birth to the disabled, to the most, to the sick children that may actually die in a few hours. A few uh, two years ago, they voted uh, one a one time sub one time support from the state, which is called for life, za życiem in Poland, and it means for you get if you agree to give birth to such a child, you get four thousand zlotys. Four thousand zlotys. That is really is really that that is nothing. That is something that you spend very fast, even if your child is perfectly healthy. And uh, so yes, yeah, so. Uh, well, Poland is a country that has the, the in which neoliberalism has really destroyed any systems of social welfare, any system, uh, the public health system. So, and the disabled parents with their children land at the very end of the society in this situation. And so, and this is how the Catholic Poland cares for the weakest, for the disabled. There is, uh, so we we in the. Mm, those who oppose the uh, newest uh, constitutional tribunal judgment say that Polish constitution says about the defense of life from the very beginning to natural death, but in fact it should say that uh, Polish Polish state cares about life from conception to birth, and then do do what you want. Yes, I would like to add that the uh, Janusz Korwin Mikke who voted for this uh, uh, the, the Confederacja Party supported this uh, ban of abortion. Uh, he many times publi in public, in television and internet uh, um, disrespect the disabled children, disabled people, and in the all neoliberal propaganda, uh, you have to be always strong, always healthy, always in good health. If you are disabled, you are you are like a trash. Mm. Yes. Yes, and uh, if you mentioned the Con Confederacja Party, the, our well ultra free market and ultra conservative right wingers, it is very funny to see how now they are struggling to survive because they were actually all of them were supporting this judgment of constitutional tribunal, and now they realize that people who wanted to vote for them are not really happy with the decision, and now they are trying to explain uh, that. No, 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 we didn't want that. We re we are not, we are, in fact, we are against. It is really funny to see right wingers first to make mess and then try to step out of that. So another, another compromise, another compromise for the right wingers. Now I would like to ask you about the nationalists and specifically about people who have been attacking women protests for several weeks now. The abolition of abortion has a strong economical, economical aspect. Rich women will always find a way to interrupt pregnancy somehow. They will find funds for an abortion abroad for an illegal abortion. Bearing and raising a sick child has a huge economic cost, especially in a country such as Poland, where social welfare is very minimal. It seems to me that the nationalists attacking women's protests are not representatives of the economic elites, and they, and they are the ones who will suffer the most economically when their wives or partners find, out, find one day that the fetus is damaged. Why do you think there is so much hatred 
for the women's strike in this environment? Oh, that is, uh, mm, I think that most of those nationalists, those of those guys who attacked, attacked women's marches are, do not have wives or partners. Because uh, you can, well, this is just a supposition. Just you, I would have to, you would have to ask each of them uh, how is the situation. In fact, but really, um, here we, this is very interesting to see how political views are dividing Polish men and Polish women, because uh, Polish men from. Um, um, a Polish men who are, as you said, not representative of the economic elite, but instead some workers, some people in a sm from a smaller uh, towns or villages. Even Polish men seem to hold very conservative views, even when it is really against their interest. And instead, on the other hand, women in Poland tend to be more liberal in uh, personal terms and uh, more uh, willing to listen to the left wing to social democratic proposals and among th among the voters of the social democrats that are now in polish parliaments also women were much more represented than men and i think that this is a this is another question for another talk and perhaps even for a sociological study why polish men in their mass are supporting views that would that are indeed against them because young men or even older men from small towns from villages uh, in Poland working men uh, are often supportive of uh, not only of conser of conservatism they also tend to believe that free market would resolve their problems that perhaps the state in Poland is still too oppressive that there are too many taxes and so men are much more willing than women to listen to ideas of for example the Confederacja party that you mentioned and uh, well women are definitely less willing to vote for extreme right and uh, why there is such a hatred for we for women's protest uh, in the, the these particular circles of nationalists well uh, the, the very idea of women's right the rights is uh, something that the nationalists hate i have this impression from the last years in poland that the nationalists stand for the very oppressive patriarchal uh, organization of the society when where women are actually closed at homes or uh, supposed to take care of the family and women protesting in the streets and yet saying that they are going to have children when they want and not when their men tell them to, is something something from the worst nightmare of Polish nationalists because they it is absolutely against their vision of the society. And uh, here uh, I am also happy that you mentioned the economic aspect of abortion because I believe that this uh, question is not really heard and during these protests that some left wing groups tried to uh, go out at the very beginning of the protest uh, with this message that yes, rich women will be always able to find a way to get an abortion either in Poland uh, by paying somebody to pay, paying a doctor to do so uh, or by going to one of the neighboring countries where the abortion is, uh, is legal and uh, on the other hand the women who are in worse economic situations who have less contacts less money less uh, possibilities to go abroad will be perhaps left with the necessity to care of the sick child or to give birth to a child that will die in a few days in a few months uh, giving unbearable suffering to to the mother and uh, I Sadly, the protests went in more liberal directions, saying, uh, concentrating on abortion as a human right, as an one of the rights that every woman has and uh, and of course this is true that every woman is entitled to decide on their own body just like everybody is entitled to do so but it is uh, it is very sad uh, that this uh, that this economic aspect was not strongly underlined in the general message of the protest while in fact i think 
that it played an essential role for the women from the smaller smaller towns to join the protest actually because uh, i can imagine that all this that the well these women who are whose economic situations is not good uh, who were already very much hit by the pandemics uh, now thought that they would be forced to raise this child and so they will really fall into misery in poland and that is why they are so active in the streets. But their voice is not really heard, and this is sad. Finally, a question about the political nature of this movement. The uh, 2016 movement's right leader, Barbara Nowacka, became an activist of the civic platform. In your opinion, will the current protest be taken over by the platform? or will Trzaskowski new movement? Is there any chance for a leftist alternative? Do you think that the Yav shunting get the fuck out will follow the liberals in the extended anti-peace coalition? Or is there a chance for some leftist radicalism? Is there even a chance for a mass support of abolishing the so-called abortion compromise and by extension of total liberalization of abortion. Oh, here you mentioned a few different things. So I will start from the last question. I think that the mass support for abolishing the compromise is all is almost there. And definitely it is in the young generation. And I think that the Catholic Church, the scandals, the religious fundamentalism getting into every sphere of life has irritated people so much that I think there would be a chance, uh, a chance that the majority of Polish society would actually accept wiping of the compromise and liberalization of abortion like it works in uh, Western countries, Western European countries. However, uh, I don't think that the politicians who are now in the parliament, both government and the oppositions are ready to talk about such solutions. I mentioned already how the leaders of civic platform reacted to the, to the protests. It is very significant that their first reactions came only after two weeks of the protests and like at first they thought that oh no it's just some some new women manifestation it's not serious we can just wait till it ends so i told so i told you that uh, the civic platform leaders were began talking about compromise when the street was already shouting for free abortion access so well, we have the society that gets secularized and we have politicians who do not follow the society. And uh, however, what you said that there is a danger that the protest will be taken over by some liberal opposition, by some uh, movement that we know too well, uh, for example, the civic platform. Uh, as far as Chasko, Rafał Chaskowski's new, new movement is concerned, I Honestly, I haven't heard about them for about a month or two. I don't I haven't seen Trzaskowski at any of the protests and I haven't heard any mention of his movement supporting this. So perhaps the new movement is an abandoned project already and perhaps we go back to the uh, well confrontations between law and justice and civic platform. And uh, is there a chance that the protests will be taken by the indeed by the liberal oppositions that we know too well well the liberal opposition is already doing uh, some uh, move some moves in order yes to take this protest uh, for their for their own good i am sure that if we get if the protest does not fade away and if we get closer to president to parliamentary elections uh, the civic platform will step up again its propaganda that in order to get rid of law and justice, in order to stop the police state that is getting uh, constructed, you need to vote for the strongest force in the oppositions that is for the civic platform. And sadly, I think that some of people would believe that. Well, to somebody who is not uh, interested in politics and to somebody who has no, not political experience, it may sound even logical to support the strongest political force. And sadly, the people are still not quite aware of the fact that the civic platform in the terms of well society social questions is more neoliberal than law and justice and uh, more conservative even in terms of abortion and the relationship with the church it's definitely not a force that would that would uh, 
orchestrate a separation from a church from the separation of church and the state in Poland. And uh, as far as the left is concerned, actually in last last polls showed some more support for them, but this is not really significant. They used to, before the protests, they were actually struggling to to get the minimum that allows them to get to parliament. They were getting around four or five percent. Now with the protests, they are back at the level of nine, ten percent, which according to the latest polls, which is still not not what they had in the last parliamentary elections, but well, this is at least a positive tendency that this extra percentage does not go for uh, Szymon Hołownia or other Catholic uh, Catholic fundamentalists who pose as the new forces on political scene, because that would be really absurd. But uh, why uh, why this uh, support is not going to the left is I think that uh, one of the reasons is that uh, for the young people who are getting who are now getting their first political experience, the social democrats, so the this this left that we have in the parliament, is not really a brand that they would know and they would correlate with some strong political vision, because um, uh, this, we have social democratic left. This is the left that is the whose aim is to repair capitalist systems, to introduce some better solutions here and there, but not to attack the whole system itself. Here we have a kind of paradox because these spontaneous movements of the YAF who had never participated in politics is actually much more radical in terms, in words that any the the, the the left wing representations in the parliament because the left wingers in the parliaments never dared to say something comparable to get the fuck out or even in more polite terms that we they want to remove all the system and well try uh, try and try something else uh, there are some deputies in the parliament who ex who well who admit their inspirations by democratic socialism by well scandinavian model by well some something like this uh, but there were no consistent vision of a better society from them anyway Perhaps now, inspired by the protest, they would actually see that radicalism is something that might help, that it is not something that makes uh, voters go away, but just on the other hand, that it is something that the young generation might actually uh, be interested in. However, uh, going back to the more immediate political nature of the movement, it is, um, it is also, I don't think that here at this point the radical left wingers uh, would uh, get well some more significance they are in the crowd i know that there are there are left wing organizations there are trade unions with more radical agenda in the crowd but still the most visible faces are liberal women are those women who stand for free choice and not really for any changes of economic system. And, but, you know, the protests have their dynamics. People learn from the protests and we can't really say what in the next few weeks or months. Uh, when the protest began, their organizers thought that they would hold on for a few days and then perhaps the government uh, perhaps the government negotiates now we know that the government is not going to negotiate that it is sending police against the protesters and really if there is more violence from the side of the police it may bring a whole new dynamics and really unexpected things might happen finally i would like to ask um, um that the two biggest revolution in the in the world the french revolution and the russian revolution uh, is started by the uh, protest of women we we know in the history the the, the march of the parisian women uh, towards the uh, palace on, on versal and also we 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 saw the history of the 1917 which is started in the february revolution by the protest of the women uh, r r r russian women do you think that uh, this protest which is now in uh, will finish or it will be like in the french revolution and russian revolution it will be continue and will uh, make something bigger i think there is a chance for something bigger but 
well, as I said, it is hard to predict and there are still many things that might happen. What is sure is that Polish government has nothing to offer to the citizens, has no vision, has no proposals that would uh, stiffen the social anger that we see today. In the past, Polish government, the law and justice government won people's support by extending social policies. But this is not something they can do now. The pandemics drained of the budget. The lower the subsequent lowering of taxes made the well the neoliberal tax policies uh, made uh, pol made the Polish state's budget so poor that it even can't afford the proper fight against the pandemics. So there is nothing that the government can give to the citizens and there is there are no steps that they can uh, take in order to regain the popular support. Actually making people scared of protesting is everything that is left to them. In in this case, um, in this situation, it uh, what happens next depends largely on the protesters, on the on the women. If they get organized, if they uh, if they go from the uh, street or uh, street uh, demonstrations to the next step, like setting up some local local organizations when the uh, when the discontent is uh, is kept and uh, when the new solutions for the future are being discussed. If perhaps there is a political organization, if, uh, if they get, have more influence or even on the program of the, the Polish Social Democrats or if they come up with their new new social or new political organizations. So a lot of things depends on the side of the revolutionary movement. And as you know, uh, the as you mentioned, the Russian Revolution and did not it, it did not win thanks to repeated demonstrations in the streets. There were many other factors that uh, that um, that allowed the revolutionaries to take power in the end. And the movements in Eastern Europe of today. And here we can mention again Bulgarian protests that we compared at the very beginning. The movements in Eastern Europe, in my opinion, are still at this stage when people think that getting out the streets and shouting uh, the discontent is enough to make government stop and change. It is not enough. And if the leaders of the uh, women's movement in Poland learn that lesson, then indeed we may witness even more historical events. Okay, great. Thank you for our conversation and I hope that uh, it will be better in Poland that the, this, uh, this class, this, this women's strike will starting big class struggle in, in Poland and it will be a reburn of the, of the radical Polish, Polish, Polish left. Thank you very much and best wishes for the fighting French workers as well. Okay, goodbye. Bye. Bye.